Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here, and today I want to help you travel smarter by showing you how you can run iOS apps natively on any new Apple Silicon Mac. For now, that just means the M1 chip, but this is part of a longer transition that Apple is going through, moving all of their hardware, all of their computers over to their own Apple Silicon chips, which they make in-house. And one of the added benefits of this is that you can run iOS apps natively now on a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro or anything running Apple Silicon. It's an understated feature, but as someone who develops iOS apps, I thought it'd be interesting to show you how those iOS apps work on a MacBook Air using the new M1 chip, just to show you how that process goes. Like, how do you get your apps on the laptop? How does that all work? Well, spoiler alert, it's pretty seamless. For this demonstration, I want to use two of the apps that I've developed. One is Wi-Fox, which shows you all the airport Wi-Fi passwords around the world. The other is DroneMate, which keeps you up to date on all the drone laws around the world. And the reason that I chose these two apps is, well, not only to show you my own apps, but also because I've developed those apps. So I know the entire development process, how it looks from the developer side of things, and now how it looks from the consumer side of things. So I wanted to show you how those apps work because I know from the ground up, from the code up, how they are built on the back end. And on top of that, I know these apps don't work on Mac OS because I never designed them to work on Mac OS. So these are the apps pretty much untouched. There's only one setting that I had to change on the back end to make this work. But basically, this is just the iOS code that now runs natively on a MacBook Air or Mac Pro or any Apple Silicon. In Xcode, the development environment all iOS apps are made on, there aren't any changes. No new settings, no new code needed. In fact, the only difference is an option in App Store Connect. For those of you who don't know, App Store Connect is where you manage your apps, release new updates, write descriptions, and add screenshots. It's basically where developers manage the App Store facing side of things. In App Store Connect, there's this new section that was recently added. After they added that section, Apple emailed all of us developers and said your iOS apps can now work on Apple Silicon. And they had a list of compatibility issues if any apps looked like they might have some trouble running on Apple Silicon. In my case, there was just one warning about location services, which said basically your apps use location services or they have it as an option that users can enable. On Apple Silicon Macs, they'll have to re-enable those location services for your specific app to get it to work. So those location service settings that are on your phone or on your iPad don't transfer over, but that's no big deal. So I kept my apps as they are. And it's really nice to not have to do any additional coding changes to make this all work. First, you go to the App Store on your Mac and search for the apps you want. In the case of Wi-Fox, the search shows nothing available for Mac OS. No surprise there. But if I click the iOS tab, it's there and I can download it. For any apps you've already purchased, you don't have to buy them again to get them to work on Silicon Macs. It's all under your Apple ID. In-app purchases also transfer over as well. And opening Wi-Fox, it just works. Opening the app for the first time, I notice it's using the iPad version. And my guess is they do this on Macs to take advantage of the larger screen. But in terms of functionality, everything else works as it would on an iPad or an iPhone. Now, obviously, the difference between your phone and a MacBook Air, for example, is the lack of a touch screen. So to get around that, Apple has created these alternative touch features using the trackpad where you can use option, hold it down, and that'll allow you to zoom in and zoom out. So if you just hold down the option key, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, and you can get closer to that touch feel on the iPhone. Now, this works pretty good. So you can use the arrow keys as well to move around, which is a little more janky than using the trackpad. But in a lot of cases, it's hard to do things when you need to use both hands. So if you do a lot of online gaming, for example, Using the trackpad with both hands isn't really going to work. It's not going to accept double clicks. So it gets a little bit confused there. So for gaming or where you need to touch the screen on both sides and click basically at the same time on two parts of the screen, that doesn't work so well on the trackpad. But for basic or for simple apps, it works pretty well once you get used to the hitting option, just using the trackpad to zoom in and zoom out. If you've ever developed iOS apps in Xcode, you're probably already familiar with those trackpad controls because they're essentially the same here. So you're probably thinking now, this is all great. You can probably get all those apps that are restricted from your phone onto your MacBook Air or your MacBook in general. And I know you think about Instagram and I've got bad news for you. Instagram doesn't work on the Apple Silicon Macs. Now, this isn't a technical issue. My guess is that Instagram or Facebook just basically didn't enable that check mark in App Store Connect. So they basically didn't allow their app to be used on Apple Silicon. 
the reason for that could be compatibility issues or features they want to add. It could be just to restrict the app still to the phone so that you have to use your phone to use Instagram. So there are a lot of developers right now that haven't allowed their apps to be used on Apple Silicon. But this transition is going to happen over the next couple of years. It's a pretty big transition for Apple. All of their machines are going to be using the new Apple Silicon over the next couple of years. And that's going to be a permanent change. And given that's a permanent change, given that the whole Apple user base is eventually going to convert over to this new silicon technology, they're going to want having iOS apps on their MacBooks. They're going to want that. You're going to want that. I'm going to want that. And I think that pressure is going to put pressure on developers and companies like Instagram to slowly move their apps onto the new silicon to enable them to work with the new Apple silicon chips. I think that's inevitable. Just don't think it's going to happen right away. But as more people start using Apple Silicon Macs, you're going to see more and more of your favorite apps make their way to those devices. From my perspective as a developer, it makes my life a lot easier because now I don't have to worry about developing a totally different version for Mac OS. It was a big feature request. A lot of people have been asking me to make my apps for Mac OS. So this takes something off my potential plate take something off the potential plate of a lot of developers. So now you can run all of the Fox Nomad apps and all of your favorite apps from other developers on Apple Silicon if the developers are willing to allow it. Thanks for watching this quick one. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. And if you want to check out that M1 review of the MacBook Air, I just posted that. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.